All right, so we are back part two of section three two. We're talking about how to find these derivatives on our calculator. So, so far we haven't talked about any tricks or how to do them algebraically. So just to get you used to how to find the slope of a tangent line or the derivative using your calculator. If they ask you to find a derivative of a function at a certain point, so far I've had you do this out the long way where you came up with an ordered pair like two, and then you plug it in, you'd get eight. And then we did two plus h, and then two plus h cubed. And you remember, we did a lot of that stuff in the previous sections. So we are kind of sick and tired of doing this really long definition. So your calculator will do this work for you. So if you have a TI-83 or an 84, the steps you're going to use, it's written up there, but I want you to go to the math button. So when I push math and I go over to number, and then it tells you to go down, I'll arrow down, oh, just kidding, it's in math. Normal math. Number eight, it says n deriv. So number eight is the one I'm gonna choose. Now I want you to notice what the calculator gives me. It gives me this weird syntax of n deriv. So this particular function asks me to do the function x cubed at x equals two. So in my calculator, I'm gonna hit x cubed. Then I have to hit comma, and comma is right there above the number seven. And then we're gonna put x to say we're doing the derivative with respect to x, and then we do comma again, and then they said at x equals two. I'm gonna close my parentheses. Now, if you remember from section three one, the slope of x cubed, we figured out was the function three x squared. So I should be able to figure this out that if I plug in the two, two squared is four times three is 12. If I hit enter, there it is. It gives me this weird decimal though. So my calculator tells me it's 12.000001. Not all of your calculators will give you that. Some of them won't. Now I want to be really specific here. Your calculator is finding the slope of the tangent line at x equals two. And to do that, it's doing a symmetric definition, which means it's going a little bit to the left of two and a little bit to the right of two, and then it's finding the slope and taking the average. So you need to realize that when they take the average of those, sometimes it will give you a little bit of a decimal approximation. We need to be smarter than our calculators and realize it was just doing an approximation. So the slope is 12. If you have a TI-84, and I'm sorry I don't have one to show it, your calculator is going to give you a different syntax for n deriv, and it's going to look like this, and it's gonna have boxes like this. So in your calculator, you're gonna fill this box in with the x cubed, you fill this box in with the x, and this box in with the two. So if your calculator looks like this, that's how you would fill it in. You're saying at x equals two, the slope with respect to x of x cubed. And on the TI-83s, I'll write that one out again, since I just did it, x cubed comma x comma two. So now do it with absolute value of x. And for those of you that don't know, you can just do math Eight, that's your n deriv. To do absolute value of x, you go to math and then over to number, and abs is absolute value of x. So go ahead and take a minute and do that. And they want the slope at zero. Now, what we should know from earlier is that the slope at zero does not exist, it's a corner. However, I put it into my calculator, and remember my calculator's going a little bit to the left of zero and a little bit to the right of zero, and it says, hey, the slope is zero. So what your calculator just did 
is it took this absolute value graph and it took a point here and it took a point here and it connects them and it finds the slope and it takes a point here and takes a point here and connects them and finds the slope and guess what it's going to keep getting closer and closer to zero but it can never really get to zero so the slope of all of those lines is in fact zero however we need to again be smarter than our calculator and realize that the slope does not exist. Now, if you have an inspire, it will likely tell you that there's an error or it does not exist. So that leads us to this exploration up here. So this exploration actually has us go through all of these different definitions of our derivative. This is the one we're pretty used to, the 10 plus h minus f of 10 over h. And then this one goes through what your calculator is doing. It's that symmetric. It goes to the right of 10, to the left of 10, and then it does the average of those two points. So I want you to take a minute, and I want you to use those limit definitions with the function x squared, and they're telling you to use h as 0 0.01 and figure out what you would get for the slope at 10. All right, and using math magic, there is the work to figuring these out. This one came close, we got 20.01. This one gave us a slope of 20, and they both ask, well, how close is it to f prime of 10? Well, we've done the slope of this one before as well. So if you do this actually on your calculator at 10, I can do n deriv of x squared comma x at 10. And we can see that the actual slope is in fact 20. So both of them get me really, really close to what the actual slope was. Now, last but not least, example four says let f of x be natural log of x, and we're gonna let our calculator graph the derivative for us. Here's how this works. In y1, I want you to graph natural log of x, and then in y2, we're gonna graph the derivative of natural log of x. Here's how this works. If you go into y equals, you're gonna put in your natural log of x. Now in y2, and this is gonna depend on the syntax of your calculator, mine has that weird syntax, I'm gonna go ahead and put in n deriv, which is math eight, and I want it to take the derivative of the function that's in y1. So in case you didn't know, you can copy and paste on your calculators. To copy and paste, you're gonna to go to this vars button so I'm gonna hit vars, y vars, function, and y1, and copy and paste. And then we're gonna hit comma x, comma x, and it's now going to graph both of those. Graph that function, and I want you to figure out what function is it graphing for the derivative. All right, so when I graphed it, this is the function that I got and I had a hard time looking at it and figuring out which one was which. So something that, in case you didn't know, if you go to your y equals, you can turn one of the graphs off. I'm gonna turn natural log off. And so now I can look at just the derivative. So when I graph that, I get that function. It's a very strange function. So I'm getting just this kind of one branch right here. So I want you to take a second and look in your graph packets and see what function is that? What function does that one look like? And I'm gonna pause and ask a question here, but this function is dun, da, 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 one over x, as long as x is greater than zero. Since natural log is only defined when x is greater than zero, so is its derivative. Pretty fun. So the last two definitions, I want you to make sure you read through those as well. If it has a derivative, then f is continuous. That is the biggest definition in this section. I want you to highlight that one, put glitter, smiley faces, and stars. That's an important one. 
I hope you've enjoyed our nine two or sorry three two video. Can't wait to see you in class.